we're here to talk about transparency uh, in this short guide to transparency. So the idea is going to be to just look at some historical examples and some examples that I made of transparent um, objects in paintings. And um, just looking at examples is going to be more than enough because what makes transparency work in the context of painting isn't the technique that you use, it's the organizational ideas that you employ. So the first painting here is by Jan David Stahim. He was a uh, Dutch still life painter, I think in the 1500s, but um, I might be wrong about that. But his, his painting here is a pretty classic uh, Dutch still life painting, but I wanna focus on the glass. So when we zoom in on the glass, what I wanna point out is that the background for the glass is like a middle value and Dahim goes and makes the, the glass uh, darker pretty much everywhere. The only things that you see that are lighter than the background uh, are the highlights. And this particular glass might be colored. It might be like a, um, instead of a clear glass, it might be more of a brown um, kind of a, or a green glass. So that gives us even more uh, reason to sort of justify that that he's he's made that the glass darker overall, but one of the things you're going to see as we go through the different examples is that um, the solution, in an organizational sense, is really about value and and what happens with value. So if we move to the next one, this is a painting that I made a couple years ago, and uh, I, I really just uh, when I was setting the painting up. It was more about the reflection of the paper in the uh, silver pitcher at the top and, and the, the sort of weird dark shape that the bottle and the pitcher made. Uh, but then I needed some other objects, so I, I, I threw in these other bottles. And I ended up having way more fun painting them than I did anything else. But the, the two bottles on the sides uh, are clear, and so what I did was I kept all the colors inside the bottles are darker and cooler than the corresponding color outside. And then things get a little tricky on the left where you see the back of the label. That's, uh, that's sort of the wild card. It just is what it is. Um, but the other one doesn't have a label, so you can kind of see how that works all the way down. And then the middle bottle is a, a, a good example of uh, a colored glass where everything inside is darker and everything inside the glass gets pushed in the direction of the color of the glass, which was a green that leans towards yellow. So the, the next slide is by Vincent van Gogh. And um, it's a relatively early painting by him. It looks like it, he probably did it in Paris. And he was just kind of being introduced to some of the big ideas about color. Um, but he was already pretty good by the time he got to Paris. So, um, so this is a, a pretty strong painting. And it has some really good values in it. But there's a nice example here of two different types of glass, or at least like a transparent liquid and an opaque liquid. He's painting absinthe here. Um, absinthe was a, a yellow drink that um, apparently didn't really make the drinker feel much like alcohol. It was more like opium. Um, but anyway, there's a carafe of water and uh, a glass of absinthe. And, and we really want to, since the absinthe is more opaque than anything, we want to focus on the glass. But um, but there's also windows, and windows, uh, you know, they count as transparency, too. We're not just talking about um, glass vessels. But the way that he handles the room uh, is important in that he lets the outdoor light be really light, makes that wall really dark. And so there's a, it's, it's not a coincidence that 
the part of the bottle that's not up against the table is up against the dark wall. That's an organizational idea that gives him room to play with the color inside the bottle. So where the bottle is up against the wall, notice all the colors on the inside actually get lighter. And then when he goes to the bottom of the bottle and he has his bottle up against the table, the table is lighter and cooler and the bottle is warmer and darker. Barely darker, but it's definitely there. And you could argue that it's just warmer with the exception of the edges. And that would be, that would be legit too. Um, but it just shows you how these simple ideas can yield a really complex result. And, and he does a really nice job with, uh, with solving that problem. The next painting is by uh, Henri Fantin Latour, one of my favorite painters, and, and he's going to feature prominently in a lot of the videos like this that I do because he just does everything right. Um, he does everything in a way that makes most of us jealous, like we wish we could do this. Um, but now, th what I said at the beginning about the organizational aspects of uh, the idea of transparency being more important than the technique. Fenton Latour here, when we get a close-up of the glass, um, it makes sense to keep your, your paint transparent when you're painting a transparent object, right? I mean, that's probably the first thing that you think about. Um, but even someone like Fenton Latour, who is known for his transparency. Um, I have an entire video um, uh, called the it's it's called direct painting the the Rubens technique, but it's really the Fantin Latour technique and it has to do with his famously transparent darks. So you'd think that a guy like that would uh, take the opportunity of a clear piece of glass, to paint it transparently, but when you look close, um, he actually paints the glass in an entirely opaque manner. It looks like there might be a little transparency at the bottom, um, but what he does is he has the same problem as the first Dahim painting we looked at in terms of value with the background. He has a middle value background, but instead of making the glass darker, here he makes it lighter and it looks like slightly cooler. And and what that kind of shows you is that you want to rely on your observations, number one, but either um, approach will work. And it really depends on what's around the glass. That should tell you how to handle it. The color of the glass and the value that's behind the glass, whether it's a whole bunch of things like in my bottle painting um, or just a wall like this, it's um, you get to respond to what's uh, what's going on in the rest of the picture, and it pretty much tells you how to handle that problem. In the last part, I threw in another one of my paintings um, because uh, most of the examples that I've shown you don't really go into anything really complicated when when there's a lot of stuff behind the glass. And in this painting, there's a lot of really complicated stuff behind the glass, and I just wanted to show you how. Um, how I handled that, which which is essentially to just just like I talked about in the other painting of mine, um, take all the colors that are you know take your time making sure that the drawing is right, and to get all those distortions right because that's that's kind of the fun part is getting those distortions to do the things you want them to do, um, but uh, just taking all the colors on the inside, leaning them all making them all darker and then leaning them all in the proper hue direction, which in this case was a yellow green. But since the, the bowl is in front of a blue table, there were lots of opportunities for me to push the range of green, the yellow green where the white 
objects and the newsprint show through all the way to that blue and even some purple because once you start painting with green you kind of have to throw red in there and then if you have some of your greens leaning more towards blue you're going to get a lot of really dull purples um, and so it's just glass is an opportunity uh, and transparent passages are an opportunity to really push some of the ideas that you might be uh, thinking about about color so uh, hopefully that helps um, eventually I'll probably put up a, a technical a technique video on transparency but um, for now the uh, organizational discussion is going to have to be enough.